Hey everybody, welcome back. And today I'm going to show you how I tuned my gauntlet uh, without voiding the warranty in the gun and not modifying it in any which way that would void the warranty or increasing the power or anything like that. Um, what, I'm, what I'm doing is basically um, tuning the barrel harmonically uh, to shoot whatever pellet that I want pretty much accurately any way I, you know, I could shoot whether it's these pellets and you see me shoot these on camera which I'll show the clip or the the actual group size I've got with these which isn't the best pellet for the gun but they shoot good out of it or whether you're shooting the best pellet that's optimized for the factory gauntlet itself um, so I got a surprise. I shot these pellets earlier without the camera just doing some tests and I found some amazing results so stay tuned for that. But just to get to the point here on how to tune the Umarex gauntlet. Now uh, like I said I could tune the barrel harmonically so I'm going to show you what I do. Uh, so let's make sure that the gun is empty and unsafe. Pull the gun, uh, bolt back and lock it. I use my single loading tray for the air arms pellets. Put the trigger on safety here. I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I got my cleaning rod. And uh, what I'm going to do is show you here. I'm actually going to unscrew the shroud. And run through how I tune this gun. And how it shoots so good again without voiding your warranty and factory setting so all right so I'm gonna just show you it's clear here just make sure it's clear you always want to make sure your gun is safe before working on it bolts back okay we're empty So now we're at the business end of the barrel itself. <clears throat> now as stated before, this barrel is choked to 5.4 millimeters, which is 0.1 millimeter difference than 5.5, which is actual 22 caliber. So uh, that's one thing that makes this barrel accurate, but if you notice here, watch this. Even though the barrel is free floated, this right here causes inaccuracy. When the pellet goes down, it's like, if you could think about it, a lot of people use the analogy of a guitar string. When somebody plucks a guitar string and think of the string as loose and it's just doing this like a, a wave. Now, at the end of the guitar, you can tune it by tightening up the string. And then when you do that, the wave just dissipates and gets smaller and smaller. And that's how they tune guitars. Same concept goes for barrels of any of anything, you know, firearms, air rifles, whatever. There is a wave that goes down, well, a bunch of waves, but just to keep it simple, there's wave and all kinds of stuff that goes down this barrel as a pellet's going through it and the pressure that was caused by it. So what's happening is when the pellet's going down, it's doing this, it's just bending bending like that. I know it doesn't look like much, but downrange it makes a huge difference. So to start off my tune, what I did was, if you can see the air stripper here, now mine uh, cracked and what I did was I super glued it and taped electrical tape around it so if yours is cracked you can get a hold of uh, Umarex I heard and get them replaced. But what I did was, like I just said, I got it uh, super glued and then taped it with electrical tape Next here, that O-ring that's on this air stripper, I replaced mine. Uh, the factory, I can't remember if it was a size 15, but I put a size 16 on here. Because when the shroud is on, the shroud gets screwed on all the way down here, and basically it keeps the barrel center. And that's what a lot of people didn't like when the gun came out, that they were leaning against stuff and point of impact change and all that stuff. I haven't found anything like that. But... Uh, like I said, first part, uh, I changed the O-ring to number 16 on the air stripper here. So now, um, to, to tune your 
gun to a pellet that is not optimized for the barrel like the one where I was shooting the video where I was shooting the Crossman hollow points. What I did was I harmonically tuned the barrel by adding rubber grommets to the barrel itself. And the only bad part about that is you're going to have to find the sweet spot of where uh, the barrel wave from the pellet going down it dissipates the best causing the best accuracy. So if you're wondering about these, now I didn't use these for the air arms pellets. When I did the video, the previous video, I did nothing to the gun. I didn't have it tuned or anything. The only thing that was on here was the O-ring. That was it. Uh, I don't think that made that bit of, a, bit of a difference, but you'll get to see here in a second why I say that. But these O-rings, uh, or O-rings, the uh, grommets, these are 3 8 inside diameter by 5 8 outside diameter. These are push-on rubber grommets. So they can take, you know, absorb the energy off the barrel. Because there is so much, uh, like I said, I'm just telling you there's one wave, but there's so much stuff that's going on to this barrel. I mean, it's actually doing all kinds of stuff. You can't even really see it with the naked eye. But, again, that dissipates the uh, wave going down the barrel. So, um, once you do that, I'm going to put the shroud back on. Okay, so as previously stated, if you're going to use a pellet that is not optimized for the barrel itself, um, like I said, the grommets are what I use to tune it for that pellet. Now, mind you, for a pellet that you're shooting just to see what it can do, I run a couple pellets, like probably about two magazines, through the gun before I start shooting for groups because that way the barrel, the bore, and everything is fouled out to that pellet and you're going to get the best results instead of switching pellets back to back. Uh, when I did those videos comparing this gun to other guns back to back, it's going to change the point of impact for each pellet because you're shooting off that last pellet. Basically, you're lapping the barrel with the pellet, and the, the pellet is leaving just a little bit of lead, maybe not hardly at all, uh, lube and everything in the rifling, so that's going to make it shoot better the more you shoot the same pellet through it instead of just shooting five or six and saying, they're not accurate. That's not how it really works. Uh, match grade shooters and bench rest for like rimfire, they shoot at least 25 in their gun and all that stuff. I mean, everybody's got their own ritual, but like I said, I do about two uh, magazines and full, so 20 shots or so, and then I start shooting for groups with pellets. Now, again, on the business end, with the shroud tightened all the way down and that O-ring upgrade to number 16, and like I said, you can do the grommets if you wish, uh, if you're not shooting the air arms pellets, which I highly recommend, uh, like I said, the grommets are 3 8 by 5 8 uh, Push on rubber grommets you can get at your hardware store. All this stuff you can do at your hardware store. Um, so at the business end again, you have your end cap to your to your shroud or your suppressor, suppression chamber right here because your barrel stops about right here. It's only 28 and a half inches and the rest of it's got your compression baffle or whatever you want to call it and a spring in there and I'll show you another little thing that I sh that I uh, use to get the air arms to shoot extremely well which I'll show you the group here in a second and I could not believe it so let me unscrew this and you'll see it so on a factory gun it's just your end cap your baffle chamber tube or whatever you want to call it for Umarex and then you have a spring in there that contacts your air stripper. There's a flat spot on your air stripper where the spring contacts it. So basically, your gun has a auto self tuning, uh, an auto self tuning mechanism inside the shroud that can actually tune itself to the pellets and negate some of the the wave of the pellet going down the barrel. So here's that spring I was telling you about that rides on the air stripper on the barrel tip itself. And what that does is, um, you know, a lot of people think it keeps this forward, but this is a tight fit as is by itself. What this does is actually keeps the barrel center as much as possible when a pellet's going down it to negate some of that wave that it's creating to make it, the barrel inaccurate. On top of being choked and everything else, this gun is phenomenal. So with the uh, spring in there like that, that rides on the air stripper, then you have your baffling system here, whatever you want to call it, a, a chamber tube that uh, negates some of the sound on top of the air suppression 
from the shroud itself because the air travels backwards and it goes back and forth, all kinds of stuff. But anyways, the spring rides on this part right here. Uh, so the pellet hits inside there and it goes in like that. This is the factory setup. And then you put your end cap on and you're done. Well, what I added here is a M8 black oxide flat washer with the thickness of 1.9 millimeter. This washer right here compresses that spring 1.9 millimeters even more than what it is doing factory and like I said these air arm pellets are optimized for this gun factory. What this washer did is actually compressed the barrel, the spring and press the air stripper on the barrel to keep the movement as minimal as possible if there is any at all. So once this goes in there and you're shooting those air arms pellets, it, anything on anything that you shoot is pretty much shooter air. So again, I can't stress it enough. If you're not going to shoot the the pellet that it's you know the barrel's optimized for. Um, like I said, shooting pellets through it at least 20 or so times and then shoot for groups to get the best, uh, you know, results as possible. Because like I said, if you shoot five or six and you bought this whole 10 and you're not getting the group that you want, it doesn't mean the pellet's not doing its job. It means the barrel, even though it's free floated. See, look, there is, since there's no tension on this end here, look how much movement this is. This flexes so much. Now watch while we put this washer in and the end cap back on now it's going to be a little bit tough because it's under spring tension so you have to watch it you have to be very careful make sure you get it on the threads And if you notice here, there's another O-ring back behind this cap, which really doesn't have much to do with anything, just seals the shroud. Um, but with that number 16 O-ring on the air stripper itself, it keeps the actual barrel more centered than anything. So let me show you here. Now you've seen that flex that I did a minute ago, or a second ago. Look at this. No flex hardly at all. When I had all that out, because of that spring not being in there and compressing the, the air stripper and the barrel keeping it centered, that thing went like this. Now it's like this. So, this is my tune. And like I said, um, I want to show you guys a little taste of what this gun is capable of. And I got uh, to shoot it right before sundown today. I had a chance to go out and test some stuff out without a camera, like I said, just to see what I can do. Um, if my theory was right behind this, adding that washer. And you guys are not going to believe this. So, let me get the gun out of the way here. So, if you remember yesterday that I posted the video, or the last video I should say, about the, uh, the groups separating by themselves, I knew that wasn't me. Let me get a close up. I knew that wasn't me being four shots there and five shots there and then had that one flyer or whatever. I knew that the flyer could have been me, but those shots being separate like that on top of each other and they were grouping up, that definitely wasn't me. That was the barrel being like a guitar string. Now, I shot today and when I changed that, when I put that washer on, it changed my point of impact. So I had to move my scope. So this... This right here was my cider shot. I got close-up shots. I got a picture of this group uh, outside to outside, and then I had a flyer over here. I might have pulled that one, not 100% sure. But this right here is nine shots in the same hole. It's not, a, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a ragged hole. It's pretty much the same hole, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I measured it. The outside to outside is .1815 of an inch. And if you minus 0.22 caliber for the size of the pellet, that is a negative 0.0385 inches. 
How is that even possible? So, uh, you know, I guess you just have to go with the outside to outside because it's kind of impossible to have a negative, uh, negative uh, group size there, but that is unbelievable when it's the same group size as those right there. That's five shots, and I got, minus that flyer, I got nine in that size. Like I said, I have close-up shots, but... I just wanted to show you guys that, and I am tickled to death. I mean, I'm not even joking. I, as soon as I shot that group and looked down my scope, my hands were shaking because I could not believe how accurate this gun is. Um, I'm definitely, I mean, I'm really, now I'm definitely going to be taking it out to 100 yards. I was planning on it anyway, but now my hopes are, I mean, my the, the bar is set high. And like I said, factory tune with this, those pellets are just phenomenal. Now that I tuned it even more, you can see what these pellets are capable of. Nine shots in the same hole at 45 yards. Like I said, I wish I had it on camera, but I was just testing my theory out because I was all I was doing before was just using the grommets. And like I said, if the pellet is already mac uh, optimized for the gun, the pellets, you know, doing that grommet's not going to really change much. I just couldn't believe that adding that washer at the end of the uh, suppression tube, compressing that spring, touching the air stripper even more, keeps that barrel from doing this, and now it does this. So pretty much anything now using the single shot tray and these air arms pellets if it's not hole on hole you know 45 50 yards it is on me so I hope you guys enjoyed this video like I said this tune does not um, mess with the warranty because I didn't want to damage the rifle I want to show you guys what this rifle is capable of and like I said that that little unit that spring and the baffle system and the, the end cap that is actually an auto tuning unit itself and I don't know if Umarex knew that or if they, they didn't advertise that, but it actually tunes itself because if you think about it, the, the lighter pellets are going to, uh, when they go down the barrel, they're going to have a wave and that spring is just enough to calm it down, but not with a little bit of a meter, you know, pellet or, uh, you know, heavy, heavy pellet. All right, everybody. So I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope you enjoy this tune as easy as it seems. It works, and I cannot believe it. Now, uh, I get asked all the time, like I said, does, do I, you know, have I upgraded the gun or anything? No, I have not. The only thing I did was tune my trigger to my liking because I have the QB Chief, so I know how to tune the trigger. Um, it's pretty much still the factory trigger just tuned inside here because you have all those adjustments. But other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I truly do. And let me know if you try this tune and if it works for you. Like I said, the gun itself is optimized for the air arms pellets, the factory configuration. But if you want to shoot, you know, pellets like this, even though, you know, like I said, your gun might already shoot them decently accurate. And I'm talking like, you know, half inch or so, um, you know, that's, which is super good. Don't get me wrong. The, you know, adding the grommets to the barrel can calm it down even more. And you can be getting quarter inch groups, no problem with the hollow points. I mean, I'm sure I could too eventually if I wanted to keep shooting them. So anyways, guys, again, I hope you enjoyed watching. And if you like the video, make sure you like it. And if you're not subscribed already, click that subscribe button. And like again, comment below if you uh, think that uh, this helped you out. And if you try it, let me know. I will definitely see you guys on the next video. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. See you later.